So now, if we want to study uh, amino acid transport in plants, we need some tools. We have a good tool here that's a mutant. I mean, <coughs> look at these two plants here. Uh, here is what we call a wild type plant. Means plant with that not gen been uh, genetically altered with any mutation. And here on the uh, on your uh, left, a mutant plant. You see the difference in size, and so these plants are darker green. They are uh, dwarf. And uh, tell us more about these white speckles. I hope you can see them. Uh, that's yes, yeah. forming on the edge of the leaves. Yes, that's a good question. These uh, speckles here are actually the, one of the characteristic of the mutant. Why now it's been studied? So we analyzed this, uh, the composition of these crystals and actually found they were made of glutamine. Remember, glutamine is one of the 20 amino acids that builds our protein. So that means that these plants uh, kind of spit out amino acid from the leaves. And trust me, it's not something that plants do generally because it takes a lot of energy to make amino acid. You need to take nitrogen from the soil, CO2 from the air, use, uh, combine that to make amino acid. So this mutant is uh, affected in glutamine transport. But to understand where it comes from, we need to uh, understand a bit better the structure of the plant. So this picture is the, um, is the leaf of Arabidopsis, where the vascular tissues are in brown here, and they end up at the rim of the leaf at the, in a structure called hydathode stain in blue on this photo. The next picture shows the hydathodes uh, in cross section, so the same blue staining here of the cells. Here, the small cell represents small uh, the vascular tissues. The xylem is arriving here, and the xylem sap is flowing out of the xylem vessel through the hydathode and out of the leaf. So the glutamine is following the same path and crystallizing, drying out, out of the leaf. <coughs> the xylem and the phloem of plants are similar to our blood vessels. So uh, you would be pretty sick if the composition of your blood is completely changed, especially if you have much more amino acid in the blood. So that's the reason why we think the plant is uh, sick as well. To give you an idea what nitrogen sufficient and uh, deficient plants look like, I prepared um, two groups of Arabidopsis plants right here, which received enough nitrogen or insufficient nitrogen. As you can see, the plants look very, very different. So if you compare leaf sizes, you can see that nitrogen sufficient plants have much, much larger leaves and these nitrogen deficient plants have much smaller leaves. They started uh, flowering way earlier than these guys because of the stress. And uh, you can see that these guys are not even standing tall because the stems are so thin compared to these healthy plants. And uh, because they started uh, flowering earlier, at this point, these guys have much more seeds. However, in the end, these guys are gonna produce much more seeds because uh, they have much longer lifespan and much more flowers at the end. So now, the obvious thing we want to check about uh, the mutant of the wild type is how the mutation of the mutant impacts the development of the plant. So how the um, uh, mutant reacts to nitrogen and to carbon. So carbon is dependent on photosynthesis, so of light. So the two obvious parameters to be changed are nitrogen supply and amount of light. So there is a large range to play with. So to, to, know, uh, to record the effect of these parameters on the growth of the plant, what could be done is to um, measure the overall fitness of the plant, size of the leaves, uh, length of the stem, how many seeds. The, if there is obvious stress symptoms, when are the plant um, flowering? Are the leaves turning yellow sooner than the wild type? If the plant, uh, the mutant is still secreting glutamine as it does in uh, standard conditions. And also, what is the overall yield of the plant? How many seeds and how big are the seeds? That and how many silics, how many silics, uh, seeds per silix. Um, eventually, it uh, would be very interesting to have pictures of the plants all along the developments. So taking a picture every week or twice a week, depending on the age of the plant, 
would be uh, a very nice way to have in a just single page how the plant behave during the life. So just to recapitulate, uh, fitness of the plants, the size of the plant, uh, how many uh, seeds, obvious uh, stresses, and glutamine secretion. In this case, um we're going to be asking you to test these plants with different nitrogen regime, nitrogen starved and nitrogen um, sufficient plant. And uh, yeah, what do you think will happen? Yeah, <coughs> excellent question because at this level, even if we know quite a bit about the mutant, we're studying it for several years, we still don't know how it could behave when we modify the nitrogen supply to the plant. It could be that um, because we have the, the plant cannot regulate um, its nitrogen uptake depending on the supply uh, in the soil. The plant will be uh, severely hit by this treatment. It could also be that because there are still more amino acid transported to the seeds, the plant will survive very nice and the seeds will be fertile and uh, contain a lot of protein. It's still uh, an open question and that's where you come in play.